Hello garden friends. Today on this beautiful February day that is uncharacteristically warm for Kansas, I thought I would take this opportunity to show you how to prune roses. Now I don't have every type of rose that there is, but I do have several types. So I can demonstrate on the ones I have um, how you would do if you have these similar type of roses. So let's get started. Okay, before you get started, there's several things you're gonna absolutely need. One is gloves. These are not actually the right kind of gloves. Um, I have the right kind of gloves in my garage. And they're rose gloves. And they're basically like thick leather. They come all the way up to my elbow. But um, I think spiders might be in them because they've been in the garage and I'm more scared of the spiders than I am of getting stabbed with my rose bush. So I'm gonna wear these gloves. Hope for the best. Uh, the other thing you need is pruners, probably a little pair like that. And then you'll need like big lopper pruners because sometimes it's hard to get down in there um, where you're going to need to cut. One tool I like to use uh, for things like deadheading, stuff like that, is this really long mm -hmm. grabber. It doesn't work for um, really thick branches, but it can take care of I mean, decently sized branches. And it can get in to places where I can't because Cthulhu here is probably like 12 feet tall. The first type of rose that I'll show you um, is an old country type, old garden type. You might see it referred to as, and you probably don't have one of these in your garden, but maybe you do. This one came from my grandparents' house, so it's special to me. When I was growing up, I always got a little rosebud from my grandpa. He would pick me a rosebud and he would pick my grandma a rose in full bloom. So it's special to me. So when they passed away, I dug up a little stem and took it with me and here we are several years later. So we call it Cthulhu because it literally will try to kill us. I have it tied to fence posts. I have it tied to trellises. I don't even know what's inside of it anymore. It's crazy. But it's a vigorous grower, and one characteristic of these type of bushes is they will bloom once a year. Um, like one, mine blooms in the spring, most of these do. So you'll get one big flush of flowers, and they are double flowers, so they look like pom-poms. They're so full of petals. This one is pink. Most of them are pink. There are a lot of other varieties, but you can find anything. But mostly these old style roses are pink, and they're very vigorous growers. They bloom a lot when they bloom, but they do not continue to bloom throughout the season. They're very fragrant. This sucker will knock you out with the beautiful fragrance as you walk in and out of the house. So it's very nice. Um, I do still deadhead it, which is when you cut off the blooms after they're spent, after they're done. Um, and that does seem to encourage it to bloom a little bit longer. But other than that, one and done. So uh, what we're left with is just kind of a a bushy tangle <laughs> which isn't as cute but it's worth it for the blooms and it's special to me so usually this type of bush you would prune that in the spring after the bloom and mostly I, I would cut the plant back by like a third um and I might kind of reshape it after it blooms like if you have one like this that's sticking out you can cut it or work it back into your trellis whatever but in the spring early spring uh, you can still remove the dead wood, stuff like that. I always like to do that when I'm pruning the other roses. So I will go through and cut out anything gray, dead, horrible looking, because that'll help encourage new growth. These type of roses will bloom on old and new wood. So what I will do though often is if there's a really old woody cane um, after the spring bloom, I will go ahead and cut that down to the crown because I want it to to make new new blooms, new growth. So we'll get started on this guy. It won't look a lot different when we're done, but um, it'll look maybe cleaner and a little tidier. Oh, I just ate so many french fries. I don't know if I can do this. All right, I see dead stuff in there already. That is a pecan tree branch. I don't even go here. She doesn't even go here. I actually don't want these suckers out here either, so I'm going to cut them off now because I don't want them. Suckers are like little mini plants here where those will shoot out and they'll all be connected. 
there is literally never going to be a time when the dogs are not barking somewhere in the neighborhood. Never. Some things to remember. You want to make sure that in between, if you're going to prune multiple rose bushes, that you sanitize your pruners between each bush. And the way I do it, um, you can do it with bleach, you can do it with alcohol. I do it with fire because it's the funnest way. All you have to do is hold the blades under a continuous fire for, I do 15 seconds just to be safe. Barking dogs. Everywhere, all the time. We never stop barking. There's always something to bark about. One thing you want to make sure you do is remove all your dead canes because they can spread disease to your healthy canes. Um, you don't want to leave them laying around under the plant or anything like that. Uh, what I like to do is just kind of leave them on the sidewalk in the yard and forget about them. And then when my husband comes out at night to take out the trash, then he finds it and reminds me and then I don't have to remember. The next type of rose we are going to tackle is the knockout rose. This is probably the most common type of rose now that you'd see in someone's garden uh, because they are so great at everything. They bloom more than once, um, especially if you keep them deadheaded. They'll keep blooming all season long. They may take a little break in the dead heat of summer, but after that, they'll just keep going and going. Uh, the other benefits are they have a lot of blooms. Uh, they're hardy. They pretty much will <laughs> take whatever you do to them. Um, I will confess, sometimes I don't even get around to pruning him. You don't have to prune a knockout rose, but they definitely perform better if you do. So let's talk about how to do that. Here's what mine looks like. Um, there's a trellis in it. Uh, that was back before I knew what I was doing. When I first got this, when we first moved in, I thought it would need one. But one of the advantages to knockout roses is that they do not need trellising. They will maintain a bushing habit of like three to four feet by three to four feet. And if you are really concerned about keeping them to a certain size, then you will probably want to prune it down to about, I don't know, foot and a half tall or 12 inches, depending on your variety. This is kind of a bigger one. But if you cut them way back, then they will kind of keep that tidy shape if that's important to you. Now, how do we know when to do this? Like most rose bushes, the knockout rose prefers to be pruned in early spring. And one of the things I look for is if the buds are swelling, but they haven't broken open yet. Because that means it's still dormant, but it's about to not be dormant. Because you don't want to cut your rose way back early winter because that's really stressful on the plant and it's got to heal wounds and stuff like that. So you kind of want to leave it alone through the winter. But late winter when it's about to start growing like gangbusters is the perfect time to do that. And I will show you what I mean by the buds are breaking. Okay, look at my little guy. Come to mama. See, there's a bud. It hasn't burst open but it's swollen. Stop it. It's swollen and it will burst open but they're not leafing out yet. So with this bush, like any of the roses, I'm going to start by cutting out anything dead. You can tell when things are dead because they're brown. You can tell these live branches are green, but there's some down there at the bottom that probably need to be cut out better that are dead and brown. Those can go anytime. And I'd also want to cut things, even if it's alive, anything that looks like it might have disease or a problem. Like, I don't like that. So I would cut that off. Something that has a lot of spotting or something, I would I would probably cut that off as well. So I will get to that. The other thing you wanna do is prune out the middle. You want some airflow going. That's part of our goal here with this prune is to increase new growth and airflow. And the middle is the densest part, so it hardly gets any air. So if you can really prune that middle part a little harder, to where air can get through, your plant will just perform better. The other thing you want to remember is during the growing season as the plant blooms, um, I mentioned deadheading where you cut off the blooms. These type of roses tend to make kind of thick fleshy hips. Rose hips is what they're called. And that is just, you can still see them on here because I forgot to deadhead. Here is a rose hip. It's dried up. Focus. 
but uh, when the thing is growing in the spring and summer that would be a big old fleshy ball and when it, it has that it thinks its job is done it thinks it's done what it was supposed to do and it can just rest so by cutting that big fleshy part off you encourage it to produce more blooms because that's what it wants to do is make those big fleshy hips my sister-in-law she's kind of a plant herb guru she could tell you a lot about things you could do with these rose hips you can eat them supposedly they taste like candy but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pass on that so let's get cutting that's dead I would like to be able to get that trellis out at the end of this that would be nice because then I could use it for something that actually needs a trellis Lucky here. Suck on that rose bush. Here is what I'm left with with my knockout rose. I actually cut more than I usually do. Um, once I got in there and started hacking away, I realized there was a lot of diseased canes and just dead stuff that needed to come out. And it will not hurt it to prune it at this stage. And I know I said that you can do pretty much anything to a knockout rose. But one time I did prune it in the dead of summer because I had to. Because the electric company made me do it. So they could get to the meter. And it really, really hated that. So I would not recommend that. The next type of rose um, that I have is a miniature rose. Which is... Uh, just a kind of a smaller version of the knockout rose really, but this little rose here It's not ketchup and mustard. It's something similar to that one um, I'm not sure it is going to make it so as you can see there is a lot of dead wood Not a healthy looking plant but I do see some green down here. Normally what we would do is cut this back about a third of its um, overall height after we cut back all the dead and gross stuff. But, you know, it was a really brutal year last year. It was hard for a plant to have that be its first year. So unfortunately this miniature rose might not have held up to it. They are not as hardy as a knockout rose. Um, winter hardy or otherwise so this guy just might not make it I'll keep you posted though we're gonna give him a chance and cut out all that dead and just see what happens not left with much after that it's hard to see with all the leaves but there are some green parts when you make your cuts if possible you want to cut them at a 45 degree angle that kind of slant away from like where the leaf and bud would go I think it just keeps um, disease out easier that way I don't always successfully make that cut, but that's what you're supposed to do. The next type of rose I have is called a drift rose. This is one of my favorite roses. Drift roses are a cross between a miniature rose and a ground cover rose. And basically they end up being winter hardy, very disease resistant, and they just bloom constantly from spring till fall. Supposedly they don't require deadheading as they bloom, but I always cut them back and it is also beneficial for this plant if after they bloom you cut back into the stem just a little bit. It actually encourages them to, to grow more and be bushier. You can also kind of trim them up during the growing season as you go to keep them tidy, but they will retain a really small profile. They grow more out than up and they kind of stay to their to their shape but every once in a while you'll get like a wild branch going off in the direction you don't want and it's just fine to cut those during the season when they're growing i don't cut um after late summer on this plant until it is time to do its prune um when you for my climate that's mid-february early march like most of my roses so what we're going to do for its hard prune here is cut it back to about two thirds of its size, which usually ends up being like about a foot tall, maybe a little bit more. I would cut at least a half of the plant down. And the way you're gonna do this is starting with cutting out the dead, just like we do any rose, 
got cut out the dead disease stuff and then progress to just trimming it down to the shape you want. And then you just want to make sure that you're cutting enough, which will seem harsh, but again, this is a plant that really benefits from this prune. It will encourage it to be bushier and a healthier plant overall and just more vigorous. I just adore these roses and I probably have ooh, six. Oh, I think I have more than that. <laughs> I just love them. Those are all the types of roses that I currently have. Although next year I will have a climbing rose to show you as well as a Florabunda type. So thanks for joining me and I hope you learned a few things about the basics of pruning up your roses. Don't forget to get rid of those old gray canes that don't really serve any purpose anymore and they're just taking up space. Hey.